Hello, this is Michelle again with some tech tip. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a rubric in Excel that automatically scores itself for you. Now, when I create rubrics, I know there are some that have you do um, if you if you do this much stuff, you'll get a five. If you do this much stuff, you'll get a four. This much, but every time I've ever looked at these kind of rubrics, it a lot of times it is really ambiguous, and you're sitting here thinking for ten minutes, Ugh, do I give this student a three or do I give them a two? Because they have some of the things in the three. But then the things that the two says that they don't have, they do have some of those things that two says they don't have. So which one do I give them? So I will come back later and show you how to do a rubric that way. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how to do a rubric the way that I do it. I tend to like to do rubrics with yes or no answers. And so here's how you would do this. You would ask questions that are yes or no questions like, did you have at least two paragraphs? Did you stay on topic? Did you include three references? Did you provide at least three supporting details? And I know that some of these things you could say, well, they didn't provide three, they, they only provided two, and that might lead you back to a different way of doing it. But in my opinion, this actually is better for the student because the student can look at this and they know if they had one paragraph, then they know you're going to put a no for this. If they had two, three, four, five paragraphs, they know you're going to put a yes for this. Um, of course, staying on topic is a little more opinion based and they might not fully know if you're going to put a yes or no there. But here, if they only had two references, they know you're going to put a no here. If they had three or more references, they know you're going to put a yes here. There's no guesswork involved here. So that's why I like this type of rubric better. So here's the easy way to do this. We could just type the answers to these questions. Yes, yes. Let's say they only had two references, but yes, they had enough supporting detail. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to make this rubric self-grading. I could put a hundred questions here if I want to, and I want to make this rubric self-grading, self-scoring, so that once I type the yeses and noes, it doesn't matter if I have a hundred questions, I don't have to go back and count them. I can already know what it's going to be. So what I need down here is I need a field that tells me the total points that this student made. And then I also need a field that tells me the total possible points that this student made. And then after I get those two things, I'll be able to get the percentage score out of 100. So to get the total possible points, let's do that one first because that one's easier. So I'm going to insert, I'm going to insert a formula. So I want to click on the formulas tab at the top and I actually it's a function. I want to insert a function. So I'm going to click while I'm clicked in this square, I'm going to click insert function. Now mine shows up because I've just recently used them. Notice it said on most recently used. Yours may not. So just to make sure you can find the right function, you need to type count at the top, but you'll find out when you hit enter there are a whole bunch of different ways to count things. Well, you might think count is the way to go because we want to count all of these for the total possible, but notice the description says it counts the number of cells that contain numbers. So that's not really going to help us because none of these contain numbers. If I look at the next one, count A, I have no idea why it's A, but it says it counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So this is the one we want. We want to click count A and then click OK. Now I have to mark the range and I could type it in this blank, but the easiest way to do it is to click this little up arrow and then it's going to let me select the range. And I want to select all of the ones where I have typed yeses and noes. And then I'll just hit the enter key and notice that it's back here. I don't have to put anything in value two. And I just click OK and notice that now it tells me there are four possible points because I had four questions. All right, now I'm going to go back to the other one that's a little bit harder, but it's not really that much harder. So now I want to know the actual points that this student got. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to insert function just in case yours isn't showing and I'm going to type count and hit 
enter or hit that go button and I see all these count things. Well, counting the number of cells that contain numbers still won't work. Counting the cells that are not empty still won't work because that's going to count all of them. I just want to count the ones that say yes. Count blank still won't work because I don't care anything about the ones that are blank. So count if counts the number of cells that meet a given condition. I'm going to use count if, so I'm going to click count if I'm, and I'm going to click OK. The first thing I need to do is the same thing I did on the last one. I need to set the range and the easiest way to do it is to just click this little up arrow button and then drag the mouse, hold down the left button and drag the mouse to select all the, the cells in that range, hit the enter key, and that gives me the range. I could have just typed that. I could have typed B3 colon B6. That would have done the same thing. But especially if you have a lot, a lot of times the easier way is to just drag it. The criteria. I could type yes out here somewhere and use that for the criteria. But in this case, it's a whole lot easier to just click inside the white space and type yes. Because I want to count the ones that say yes. Not the ones that say no, but just the ones that say yes. When I click OK. Notice that in this cell, now it says three, and if I count the yeses, one, two, three, that is correct. Notice that if I change them to no, it will change to two because now there's only two yeses. Now, let me show you something important about this. If I type yes in all capital letters, it is not case sensitive, so it does tell me that I have three yeses now. But if I accidentally type an extra S on yes, that is not yes anymore. So now it tells me there's only two yeses. So you have to be careful about the way you type it. You have to make sure you, you don't accidentally spell it wrong. But here's the other thing. I could type maybe notice that the number didn't change because I haven't said anything about no. All I said was I want you to count the cells that have yes in them. So if they say anything else besides yes, supercalifragilistic, expialidocious, something like that. It still doesn't change because I just said yes or no. It doesn't mess anything up. It's just that anything else I type besides yes is not going to count. It's only going to count the yeses. But if I misspell yes, it's not going to count that yes either because that is something else besides yes. So that's the only thing you have to be careful about spelling it right. Now, the percentage score, we're, we're going to do a formula, but this time we're going to type our own formula. So I'm going to type the equal sign and I'm going to type a parentheses just to make sure it does it the right way because the formula to get a percentage, I'm just going to click. Now that I'm at the spot I want it, I'm just going to click in this cell because I want to do the total number of points and notice that it put the the right letters in the cell, B10, that's right. I want to do the total number of points divided by, so I type a division sign the total possible points, so I just click that again, it will just automatically pop it down there. Close the parentheses because that's what's going to be on top of the fraction. And I want to multiply all of that times 100 and that will give me the percentage score out of 100. When I hit enter, automatically it changes that to 75. If I go back up here and change some of these yeses to noes, now the student has a 50 or a 25. If I change them all to yeses, the student has 100. So you see that this works. And notice I misspelled no. I accidentally hit enter before I hit the O. But it doesn't matter because it's not yes. So it still counts it as a no. The yes is the one you have to worry about misspelling. The no, you don't have to worry about misspelling. However, there's a way that you don't have to worry about misspelling the yes either. You could, instead of putting these as yes and no, you could put yes and no over here somewhere way out of the way and we can hide this column. Okay, my Excel already has developer tab here. Yours may not because it doesn't, it's not on there by default. You have to make it turn on. So to make developer turn on, you would click this, this little down arrow on the toolbar and do more commands. You want to go to customize ribbon. And in yours, it may not have a check by developer over here. Yours may look like this. So then what you really want to do is put a check mark by developer so that it shows developer. And then click OK. 
and then you should have a developer tab here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have the yes and no over here, and that way it will always be perfect. It will either be yes or no. So I need to make these just a little bit bigger so that they hold my checkbox. And I'm going to go to the developer tab and I'm going to insert an ActiveX combo box. I'm going to insert it right inside that cell, but I still need to shrink it down a little and make sure it fits well. And now while I'm clicked on that combo box, I'm going to click properties and I'm looking for two things. I want to look for the list fill range. This tells me, well, let me just show you first. If I turn off design mode and I go right now and click this down arrow, there's nothing there. Yep. I want to go back in design mode and this time when I click it, I want to click properties. And so I'm looking for list fill range. That tells me what do I use to fill that with and I've got to type it. I'm not, I haven't ever found a way to make it automatically pop in here, but I want to type L3, which is this box and L4 and the punctuation to say you want to go through. Normally you would think a hyphen, but it's not a hyphen. You type L3 colon L4 and that tells you to go from L3 to L4. So the only other one is that I want this linked cell. So if I just have a value in the checkbox, it doesn't do the calculations at the bottom. It actually needs to be, the checkbox is not a cell. The checkbox just looks like it's in the cell. So to do the calculations at the bottom, I actually have to have a value in the cell. So what linked cell means is when I pick something on the, on the select box, where do I want that value to go? Well, I want it to go in the cell it's in. It's just going to be behind there. and We'll never see it, but the computer needs to know that it's there. So the exact same box that I have that, that combo box in, B3, I want to make sure I put that as linked cell, B3, and hit enter. And now I can close properties and I can get out of design mode by clicking it again to toggle it off. So now when I click yes, it changes at the bottom and look, I do need to make this just a little bit bigger still. Now, this yes is showing up because it's in the box behind there. So I want to make sure that this combo box is big enough to cover that up. Go in design mode to change the size of your combo box. Go out of design mode to actually use it. If I change it back to no, I still have one possible because there's one, remember this is counting ones that are not blank. So I still have one possible, but I have zero total because the student right now has a zero. The only one that's marked is no. If I change it to yes, they have a hundred. Right now it's a zero or a hundred, but it is working. And so now first thing you think is you might think that you could just copy these down, but notice that copies down the yes behind there. It does not copy down the actual checkbox. The only way to copy the checkbox down, let's look at row height, and this one is 29.25. So now we want to make the others, we want to make these, whoops, row height 29.25 that way they'll all fit well I want to click this and I'm going to either right click and click copy or I could have hold down control and, and hit C and then I'm going to go to the next cell got right click and let's paste there and then the next cell right click and paste and the next cell right click and paste but we still have an issue because I want to click on the first one that I pasted. I'm going to go to properties and notice that it still has the, it still has the list fill range as L3 to L4. That's perfect. That's what we want. But the problem is, is it still has the link cell as B3. So it's only changing the value of B3 at the top. I want to make sure that this one is B4 because that's where it is. Now I can click the next one. This one should be B5 because that's where that, combo box is this one should be b6 because that's where that combo box is and yes that is tedious and you do have to change that now if I go back out of design mode and I click some of these yes and no now notice the student has a 75 because they have three yeses and one no and it is counting everything just like it is supposed to. So this is how you make a rubric. You could put your nice little titles at the top or whatever you want to do. You could turn off grid lines by going to view, turn off the grid lines and you lose those grid lines and you could make your own um, 
like say I want to make a border around here, I could do a thick outside border there just to highlight those and maybe I want another border here. Oops, that's not the one I meant to do. Something like that. Um, and this is still not ideal because you have the numbers right, but you could play with the formatting of it a lot. But the point is, this, is that now you have an actual rubric that grades itself and you could have a hundred questions here if you want to but this rubric grades itself now you don't need this yes you need it let me rephrase how i'm saying that you need it because these combo boxes have to have this yes and no you cannot delete it you cannot get rid of it if you do you'll have a problem with these combo boxes but as far as us humans us humans we don't need to see this and as a matter of fact it detracts from everything there so i'm going to right click on this l at the top and I'm going to click hide and notice now my column goes from K to M. It skips L because L is still there. I'm just not having to look at it. And if I ever want to see it again, this time I'm going to left click and I'm going to start on the M and I'm going to drag back to the K. You could do it either way. Now that I have both of them highlighted, I'm going to right click either one of them and click unhide. And notice there's my L. It pops back in. So I'm going to right click and click hide to get rid of it. But remember, I didn't really get rid of it. I only got rid of it for us humans. The computer still knows it's there and the computer still has to know it's there. So that is how to make a rubric that is self grading. Um, you could do this a few ways. You could actually name, you could rename this sheet to be um, student one. And then you could copy move to the end and create a copy. You could copy it again and make and rename this one to be student two. And then you could file and save and have this file named assignment number one and you could have all the assignments in one file. Or you could save this file as your template and then reopen it and save it as a new student. Have the name of the of the file be the student's name and the assignment's name. So you could do it whichever way works best for you. You could have all your students in one file as different worksheets or you could have each student as a separate file.